News starts right now. I can't believe we found this guy and we got this lucky. They were lucky, luckier than a man who tried the same thing yesterday, tracking down his stolen vehicle only to get caught in a shootout in the South Park Mall parking lot. In this latest case, it wasn't a car, it was an RV stolen in the morning, recovered that night. This Holotus couple and their friends managed to track it down on the Internet earlier this week. Garrett Berger tells us, though, how it was done, but also why police don't recommend that you take this same step. Nathan and Katie Devers RV was parked in the parking lot outside of his business Sunday night off of the main drag in Holotus. But when they arrived Monday morning, it was gone. I was angry and sad and disappointed and felt violated that somebody thinks that they have the right to come to take something that's not theirs. Security video shows a man in a pickup towing it away earlier that morning. After reporting the theft to Holotus police, the Devers and some friends kept an eye on Facebook Marketplace. That's generally where somebody is going to, you know, sell something, try to make quick cash. Soon, a familiar folding ladder showed up, the same kind that had been in the RV. Also listed by that seller was a pickup that looked to be the same one from the surveillance video with visible plates. However, it was a dead end when they told police. The license plate on the vehicle was stolen. Okay. So it just didn't match the description of the vehicle compared to the license plate. But Facebook did show the seller was out of the southwest side. And as a friend drove around the area looking for the house from the marketplace photos, Katie Dever noticed another photo had a house number. And when their friend checked it out, there was their RV in the driveway. I can't believe we found this guy and we got this lucky. Dever says she urged the friend to let police handle it from there. They called San Antonio police in and they arrested 46 year old Joseph Allen Whitaker for theft. The Lotus police say that anyone who ends up locating their stolen goods should never try to confront the thieves and that it's better to get police involved. Even then, they say you should be careful. You see, you know, crimes, people try to, you know, retrieve their own items. Accidents happen, they get shot, they get stabbed. Um, it's just, it's not safe. Dever is glad they and their friends did the legwork before handing it over to police. I fully believe that our police department would have would have done it, but um, there's a very small window, right, when something like this happens to be able to get your items back. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. A dragon tattoo an inked clue on a gruesome discovery from last week. The Bear County Sheriff's Office now telling us that they need our help to identify the headless torso that they found in a piece of luggage last week. The Texas Rangers Forensic Lab was able to create a mock-up of this tattoo based on what was left of the torso found inside a duffel bag. That piece of luggage found on a property in the 1800 block of South Loop 1604 last week. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar saying investigators have exhausted all their resources trying to identify the dead man. We've done our own checking through our through our jail database, through the state prison database to see if there, we've got systems in place in our jail where we can query uh, dragon tattoo on back, for example, and we just haven't had any response. If you know someone who might be missing, who has a tattoo like this, a dragon on their back, or any other information helping identify this person, you can call 210-335-6000. Tonight, we're hearing from people who live in the area where a six-year-old boy and a man were shot. We first told you about this last night on the night beat. It happened sometime around 8 at an apartment complex in the 5800 block of Medina Base Road. That's on the southwest side. According to SAPD, four suspects in a red Mercedes started shooting. The child shot in the foot, a 23-year-old man, was shot in the leg. Who fires toward babies? That's somebody that has no heart, doesn't care about life. What bothers me is that people these days are so quick to pick up a, a gun. The boy and the man were taken to a nearby hospital. Both are expected to recover. Officers say the suspects drove off in that red Mercedes. It had tinted windows and silver lining. San Antonio police are also looking for a shooter who took what looks like random shots at a man in his yard early this morning. It happened around 345 today at a home in the 100 block of Spot Street on the south side. Officers say the man was standing outside of his home when someone shot him in both legs. According to police, the victim says he didn't know the shooter or what caused the shooting to happen. No suspect has been found.
A man who was found guilty of paying a person $10,000 to kill his ex-girlfriend facing the consequences of his actions today. After Teodoro Torres was found guilty in February, a judge now delivering the long-awaited sentence. Eric Hernandez takes us inside the courtroom as Torres and the victim took the stand. I'm already at the end. I feel it. Teodoro Torres telling Judge Kevin O'Connell that he is in need of a new liver and dying, and that everything was a misunderstanding. Torres' sentencing hearing was today after being found guilty earlier this year of trying to hire an undercover Texas Ranger to kill his ex-girlfriend Jessica Briseño. And videos show during trial Torres can be heard telling that Ranger to even gouge her eyes out. But Torres today says that he was scared for his life and thought the hitman was going to kill him. I, I was shocked during the, the, uh, the trial because all the evidence brought was in black and white. These guys are going to kill me. And um, so I said that. To avoid that, I said whatever I could. Torres went on to say he loved his ex and never wished any harm toward her. Jessica Briseño then took the stand and told the court that her relationship with Teodoro wasn't good and he had threatened to kill her several times and she had even filed a protective order at one point. Tell me what he's pointed at me. You need to die. You need to die now. While I'm holding my poor little son in my arms. During closing, the defense asked for a five-year sentence and the state asking for 20 years. In the end, Judge O'Connell sentenced Torres to 12 years in prison. Jessica had these final words for him. I will you find peace within yourself, Ted. I tried. As a part of that sentence, there is also a no-contact order with Jessica and their son. Torres is eligible for parole after serving half of those 12 years. At the Kalina Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. You may have noticed the price of gas is skyrocketing here in San Antonio, and that is no coincidence. According to AAA, the current price for a West Texas intermediate crude oil is $79, that's for a barrel. Right now, AAA says that the average gas price in San Antonio is $3.45, that's up about 20 cents from last week. But compared to a year ago, we're actually 34 cents lower. So, what can you do to save gas? AAA says it all comes down to the way you drive. The number one thing we know from AAA studies is driver behavior is the number one factor when it comes to fuel consumption and also conserving fuel. Some things you can do to save gas include avoiding hard and quick accelerations, drive just the speed limit, and make sure your tires are in good shape. And gas prices are on, like on a yo-yo lately. All right, let's take out check out traffic right now. This is 37 at Jones. It says 37 heads towards 35 there, you know, kind of the access road. This is 37 northbound, 281 really, 37 to Jones, and there's a big backup on that exit ramp to 35. Check out live cam right now. A few clouds out there. They're just ornamental. <laughs> they don't mean anything. Yeah, but, hey, they, but they, that, they, that number at the bottom of the screen does mean something. <sighs> yes, guess what? We did it today. Psychological boost for San Antonio. Officially at the airport, 99, our high temperature today. So we were just shy of triple digits. That keeps us at 32 100 degree days so far this year. Across the state, we're feeling the summer heat, but it's really not as bad as just a handful of weeks ago when temperatures were even hotter. Austin, a high of 98. Abilene, 101. 99 in Lubbock. Midland, 98 degrees, their high temperature. Del Rio, 103. Remember, it was just weeks ago when Del Rio was above 110 for several days in a row. We're not very far from our high temperatures right now. 90 degrees at 10 o'clock, midnight 84, a bit of a breeze as well out of the southeast. We'll talk about the African dust along with an update on the tropics, where the moisture is and where it's going in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. A respected voice in San Antonio's east side community, the late John Inman, will have a historic marker honoring his commitment to civil rights. That dedication will be Saturday morning at Mount Zion Baptist Church, close to where his barbershop was. Jesse DeGriato tells us it was much more than just a barber shop. I always like this a daddy. He reminded me of. Photos and clippings, memories in a box. 
are fragile reminders of the father of Janice Inman Joseph, a barber by trade, and yet... John Inman was the most revolutionary barber I ever met. <laughs> Having endured the indignities of Jim Crow, John Inman was active in the civil rights movement here. So his platform, his pulpit, was his barbershop. Which is why his daughter donated her father's materials to SACAM, the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum. Wherever there was a, a fight for injustice, daddy was there. Many times, so was longtime civil rights activist Mario Salas. I think he gave people courage because he was fearless and uh, he was an inspiration to me. So much so, Salas arranged to have a marker erected outside the church where John Inman worshipped. So his memory, what he did, wouldn't be lost to history. It will be dedicated on Saturday morning. Once the historic marker is unveiled Saturday, John Inman's daughter says it will be yet another milestone in her father's life. Her father's legacy, she says, is one of love and compassion for the voiceless and the oppressed, especially now, they say. We're on the road to progress. We're on the road to justice. That road is long. This is good that we've accomplished this, but what about those that haven't? What can we do to help someone else. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Great guy. Still ahead on the news at six, how the use of artificial intelligence in medicine can help save lives in the future, as well as money. We have details next. Holding on to hope, seven years ago, a San Antonio man shot and killed outside of his home. Why his mother not giving up on finding justice for her son. And having to adapt to the heat, it's not just people that are adjusting in this, adjusting to this oppressive heat wave. Now the owner of a farm in Holotus is making sure her animals aren't experiencing heat exhaustion. Plus a renewed push to bring speeding to a stop. The problems that some homeowners say they have faced in their San Antonio neighborhood and the next step that could help slow down drivers. Those stories and more on the night beat. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is having its moment getting integrated into our lives, and soon it may be used to find cures. It is being considered as a faster, less expensive way to get our breakthrough medicines and will potentially save billions of dollars and lives. You may have heard of chat GPT. Everywhere you look, everyone seems to be talking about AI. But it's not just helping to write resumes or papers. AI is also changing the medical world. We can cut down the experiments as well as cut down the time. On average, it takes 10 years to develop a new drug. Now a team at the University of Central Florida is speeding that process up using an AI-based drug screening method that they've developed. We are you know, working on basically uh, trying to try to model drug and, uh, and the target uh, protein interactions and find the pre uh, predict their interactions. It translates the complex interactions at each drug protein binding site into words. The AI model then analyzes that language to learn which parts of a virus protein a drug will bind to. With 97% accuracy, it can predict how well a drug will work. So you can just uh, give it, for example, the COVID protein and uh, test it against all the dr FDA approved drugs and see whether or not they bind or not. That's the, the beauty of this work. It's called Attention Site DTI, and it's ready to be used right now for free for anyone developing a new drug. I think it's going to revolutionize uh, medical field um, in so many different ways. It's expected to another upside for using AI in drug discovery. The less time in the lab, the lower the cost of the drug to create it. And researchers believe that that savings could be handed down to the consumer. As for this technology, researchers are now ready to create a website like ChatGPT, making it simple for other scientists to put in their data and see if their drugs will work or not. All right, it's just one of the frustrations of a very hot summer. We have the conditions that if there was a disturbance, it would rain. Problem? And, yeah, the disturbances are too far yeah. away. Yeah. We need trouble at home. Right, the, the heat high is not centered right overhead, no. so the door's open for a disturbance or two. We just don't have all the ingredients and there's a disturbance close by. We're gonna get to that in just one moment, but let's first get you ready for the weekend. We were 99 today. 
back to 100 tomorrow with some ornamental clouds back in the sky. Then by Sunday, sunny and 101. A bit of a southeasterly wind, 5 to 15 most of the weekend. So we talked about that disturbance down to the south of us. The center of the heat high is still over the desert southwest, basically New Mexico, Arizona. There's this little swirl this counterclockwise swirl over Mexico and the western Gulf of Mexico. It, the shower activity is offshore for the most part, also creeping into Mexico and down near the valley. So at least somebody is getting some moisture from this. However, that's going to stay too far to the south of us. It is going to throw some clouds our way, I do think. See these blow off cirrus clouds? I think we'll also see some of that tomorrow as well from that disturbance that's going to stay to the south. But the upper level winds, those blow off clouds, the upper level winds are blowing those clouds our way. So we'll just have some ornamental clouds in the sky tonight and even into tomorrow. So what about the tropics? It's that time of year. You know, tropics usually heats up a little bit and there's this disturbance that's moving into Central America and it's going to cross over and head into the Pacific with a 70% chance of development in the Pacific over the next five days. That's just south of Mexico. Sometimes we get moisture from these systems or remnant energy and moisture. That's not going to be the case. Even if this develops, it's going to head due west out into the Pacific. In the Atlantic, there's still this area in the eastern Atlantic that's got a 60% chance of development. This is very far away. It's going to head to the west and then possibly even kick northward over the next five days. And right now there's no signs of that turning into anything that could affect uh, our neck of the woods or even the U.S. We'll just keep an eye on it. Saharan dust, we've been talking about this, that haze in the sky. And coming up at 645, we'll take a look at the air quality monitors around San Antonio and Bear County, and we'll check in on the air quality. But the dust is still overhead. It's giving us that dusty haze to the sky. It's going to be decreasing tomorrow, and then I think it's pretty much gone by Sunday. So those light to moderate amounts of dust we have right now will decrease to very light tomorrow and then gone on Sunday. And then looking at the computer model, which we will jump into more at 645, I don't think it's anything to really worry about for the foreseeable future, anything to really think about. Sunny right now, 99. Hey, that's officially our high today. This is the key though, the dew point down to 56. One benefit of us drying out in this dry stretch is that we get a break from the humidity in the afternoon during the hottest part of the day. So the heat index, not even an issue anymore during the afternoon. It's all about the temperature. New Braunfels now at 99, along with Hondo, Kerrville 96, Converse 100 along with Pleasanton, Del Rio 103, Catula 104. The typically hotter locations, yeah, they're hotter, but not oppressive like what we saw in the weeks past earlier this summer. Tomorrow, we'll make it up to 103 in Carrizo Springs, Canyon Lake 100, even Kerrville 99, right around 100 in San Antonio, Elmendorf 100 downtown. 101. A sunny stretch here for the next several days, and it does look like we'll add a few degrees once we get into the weekend and early next week, but we're talking up to 103 for high temperatures. The hottest we've been so far this summer is 106. Oh, 103 again. All right. Grin and bear it, right? I do not like that deja vu. Yeah. All right, let's turn to the Cowboys right now, and there's a defensive player on the team who apparently likes to make swimming references. Yeah, he's a funny guy off the field, but boy, does he create terror on the field. The Cowboys have some several awesome defensive players, but there is one guy who really stands out on and off the field. Larry Ramirez with that coming up live from Oxnard. And the fans get to finally see what the Texans are up to at training camp. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. He is one of the top defenders on the highly touted Cowboys defense because he plays all over the field. He is known mostly for creating havoc with the opposing quarterbacks. Micah Parsons is also one of the top defenders in the league. He is probably the hardest guys for offenses to figure out when it comes to protecting their quarterback, and he is a whole lot of fun to listen to on interviews. Our Larry Mir has got a chance to hear him today. He now joins us live from Oxnard. Larry? Yeah, that is so very true, David. So, you know, Cowboys training camp was very chill today because the team held a walkthrough only before opening ceremonies go down tomorrow morning, and then it'll be crazy. So our highlight today was talking with Micah Parsons, a.k.a. the Lion. He is always a blast. So the Cowboys drafted him in the first round with the 12th overall selection in the 2021 draft, and he instantly became a nightmare for offensive coordinators who were trying to stop him. In two seasons, he's racked up 26 and a half sacks, and in that time has also become a media fave in part two 
due to his sound bites. During his 15 minute or so presser today, he was asked about his mindset and how does he take his game to the next level? Listen up. Man, I'm ready to take everybody to the deep water. You know, everybody comfortable when they knees in the water. I'm ready to go out into the deep water. I hope everybody prepared to go into the deep water. Um, in terms of my conditioning, where I'm at, how I determined how I was going to get better this year, I think it's through the roof. I just hope everybody's ready. The deep water's awesome. Second year offensive lineman Tyler Smith has to be ready to play either tackle or guard because he's going to be asked to play both again, just like last season when he was a rookie. On the first day of camp this week, he played left guard right next to left tackle Tyron Smith, one of the best when healthy. What a great left side if Tyron can stay on the field. Tyler Smith likes being versatile because it helps the team out. No, obviously, you know, Tyron being a Hall of Fame tackle and him being healthy, that does nothing but help the team. And, you know, I can help the team by, you know, stepping in and guard and, you know, doing what I need to do. I think I don't think it's a bad thing. Like being being too versatile has never been a complaint to anybody. So I think that I think it's good for right now. The energy will be high tomorrow during the opening ceremonies, followed by practice. The players are off Sunday before putting on the pads on Monday. And, of course, Jerry Jones will join us Sunday night on Instant Replay. More Cowboys on the night beat. David, back to you. All right, Larry, look forward to it. Thank you. Hey, for the first time, Houston Texans training camp fans were allowed to watch practice. Yeah, they got to see the fans for the first time. The players did, and they also got to show off a little. Now, one of the guys who was showing off his skills last year running back Damian Pierce, he was one of the only bright spots for the Texans last year. Rushing for nearly 1,000 yards, he was just 61 yards short. And that has proven to be motivation for him for this year to get over that 1,000-yard mark. Definitely cap a cap 1,000 yards. Definitely, I, I say we say that because I was at, what, 960-something? 939. 939. So, yeah, 60 yards, 60 yards, 67 yards away from 1,000, you know what I'm saying? So, I definitely see that. That's some. That's a goal I have for myself. That's what I expect from me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I definitely want to cap a thousand. You know, slow expects that. Everybody around me expects that. And um, I'm going to try to everything in my power to get that. All right. So the Texans are off tomorrow, Sunday and Monday. They're back to their 9 a.m. practice schedule. Hey, Spurs forward Kelvin Johnson and his brother Caleb, who plays for the Austin Spurs, the G League, hosting a basketball camp at Cornerstone today. Keldon heading into his fifth season in San Antonio. He has been one of the leaders of the team. And last year, he averaged 22 points, five rebounds, three assists a game. But with a roster full of small forwards, Keldon could be asked to come off the bench. And he is ready for whatever role the Spurs want him to play, as long as they win. Uh, do I expect for myself to come off the bench? No. But um, if any facet of, of, of the situation that me and Pop sit down or, or that's what needed of me from my team, I'll do whatever it takes. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm a winner. I love to win. I love, that's why I play basketball to win. I'm a competitor. So if, if, my, if that's my role, then, then I will fulfill that. Love that attitude. Remember, Manu came off the bench a lot of his career, and you know where he is in the Hall of Fame. I like seeing him play with those little kids, you know, just like having fun. Yeah. Well, they are still very young themselves. So. Well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. Keldon, what, is seven years older, maybe? <laughs> no, I know he's older than that. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. All right. We got, are going to be back in just a minute. Yeah, we've got your Puro picks right around the corner. All right, how about some food, a finale, and some reggae? We've got that and much more in today's Puro Pick. Stephanie Guerra joins us with Puro Rhymes with Flinche. <laughs> we can't say it, though. Uh, we can't say it. But I love the fact that you bring us stuff that people, I mean, you need to be in the know to know about this. And so I'm glad we can let our right. audience know. If you know, you know. You have to watch a case at 6.30 on Fridays to find I, out. I, this is my favorite. <laughs> uh, sorry. But this is my favorite 6.30 segment all week There you go. Because you always have something that, I haven't heard anywhere else. I appreciate that. Yeah. So we're going to talk reggae first. Yes. So um, tomorrow is the 2023 San Antonio Reggae Festival at Rosedale Park. This reggae festival has been going on for a very long time. So they know their music and they bring the headliners. Um, tomorrow they're featuring Alex Rebel Marley and a ton of other performers from 2 to 11 p.m. Um, it's really great. It's family fun. Um, I think kids under maybe like 10 or 11 are actually free. Um, but you know, all the music, all the mu all the food, and, and it's at Rosedale Park. It's like yeah. iconic to have yeah. anything yeah. at Rosedale Very Park. Very easy to Love get that. to as yeah. well. 
All right, and uh, okay, I'm assuming that once you do that, you might want some food. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, there's, we're going all over the city this weekend. So okay. Rosedale Park and the Inner yeah. West Side. Out in Hell Lotus, there is a venue, a beautiful venue called Josabi's. They have concerts there, they have weddings there. I've, I've been there. Beautiful yeah. event venue. They've been adding on to it. They're showing off Josabi's and all of their neighbors tomorrow with a taste of Josabi's food festival. Doors open at five o'clock. They also have a discount for you on tickets if you bring a canned food donation that goes back to San Antonio Food Bank. But they also have great music tomorrow along with the food. Uh, George DeVore, Paco Estrada, and Faya, which we've talked about before, a little yeah. punk rock band. Um, but it's a lot of family fun, and it's on the north side of town. So we have people all over watching, and we get to run into them when we're out. But it's good to see what's going on everywhere. And it, it sounds like the music is very different yes. at that particular thing. I mean, they have yes. a little bit of a little bit of everything. All three uh, bands are all different genres yeah. of music. Um, and it really is fun for all ages. Josabi's, um, the owners, they take care of everybody and make sure everyone has a great time. All right, and Josabi's is going to be the provider of all of the food? They have different restaurants ah, that are going to be featuring their it. food there. Yes. So you get, it's kind of like, you know, the Fiesta events, like a taste yes. of. Um, so you get a taste of Josabi's. So you'll get a bunch of different food um, and drink options tomorrow with your ticket price. Yeah, so now we're gonna head to King William. We're gonna head to Southtown <laughs> for the brick, right? The Friendship we Market love is brick. what it's called? Yes, yeah. Um, so Sunday is International Friendship Day. Oh, I'm so glad we're friends I now. Know. We can That's celebrate great. together. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I will say growing up, I never thought um, I would be friends with Steve Spreester and Ursula Perry. So, <laughs> Well, this is amazing. there you go. <laughs> yeah. Goals. Yeah. Because you all are amazing. Thank yes. You. Um, so there's a friendship market tomorrow morning hosted by Que Bonita Crafts and Designer. And they've got a great um, lineup of, you know, 30 plus vendors um, celebrating friends. So all of the arts and crafts and jewelry will be themed around friends. I bet you you'll see some golden girls, you know, yeah. all kinds of things. I know Myra's not here, but yeah. we can throw that in for yeah. her. Yeah, she's watching at home. She knows. <laughs> but, and it's but yes. inside. And it's indoors. Yeah. Yes. We're continuing to keep up with indoor events because it is so hot. Right. And it will be hot tomorrow. <laughs> we guarantee it. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay. The, this one's for Steve. The final oldies y chill at yes. the squeeze box. So we've been talking a lot about Not the North St. Mary's. <laughs> no, no, I mean, these are, this is, this is I, the squeeze box is going out of business. Yes, so we've talked a lot about the North St. Mary's Strip yes. and all of the troubles that they've been going through. Squeeze box has been around for seven years. Um, and unfortunately, just due to, you know, the last three years of different issues, construction, um, yeah. closures, COVID, everything, they have made the decision that this is the, the, the end of their run. Aww. It's been a good run, seven years is a long time for a bar, but it's gonna be an awesome celebration on Sunday night with San Antonio's own Sunny Ozuna, um, with, of Sunny and the Sunliners, classic musician, Chicano soul, but he's still around. He's not yeah. that, he's not old. He's still performing, great music. People, obviously 21 and up can go, LA 45 is another great San Antonio band, all vinyl DJ set. And of course, you can't have a finale without mariachis. So you cannot. it's going to be a really fun party Sunday night I at the Squeeze Box. I imagine there'll be some tears. This, <laughs> you know, I, it's always yes. sad when, when someone yeah. has to close their doors. One of Sunny Ozuna's songs is actually Smile Now, Cry Later. <laughs> so it's a good it's fit. appropriate. <laughs> all right, we missed one, the Paper Trail essay at the Rock oh. Box from 11 till 7 on Sunday. Yes, and you cannot miss Paper Trail. Paper Trail is one of my favorite events all year long, and it is probably one of the top places I buy local art and prints okay. for my home. So um, they have, I, I don't know, maybe close to like 100 vendors of printmaking um, styles. So you will find everything from like lowbrow to highbrow to DIY in between. Um, it's at the Rock Box over on East Houston Street, 11 to 7. It's a great event. Be ready to shop. So many prints that are just you can see the San Antonio pouring out of the artist. Kind of over you know, where the Spaghetti great. Warehouse used to be to give you yes. an idea where it is. It is near yeah. the old Spaghetti Warehouse. By the way, somebody please buy that and do something with it. I know. <laughs> Every time I go by there, I'm like, I can't believe somebody didn't, because it's a great building. Oh, yeah. Maybe the squeeze yeah. box will move over there. <laughs>
<laughs> I think that he has other plans. He does have. Right now, you yeah. should definitely keep up with Squeezebox social media. Their owner is opening a couple new bars, yeah. um, and they are opening very soon. He's a busy guy. All right, <laughs> and finally, we've got a film festival. Yes. This Not is, just a film festival. This is the yes. film festival. San Antonio Film Festival is now in its 29th year, um, which is awesome. The organizer, Adam Rocha, you know, like, they have, they have put together a great lineup of films. They have everybody from young filmmakers that are in high school programs to indie filmmakers, documentaries, and then, you know, more well-known filmmakers that are presenting in the film festival. And it's awesome because it's also all over the city. So it's downtown at the Tobin Center and the Radius Center, and then at Santico's Palladium over up on the north side as well. But you will see films all week long from August 1st to August 8th. Um, and it's a really, really great cause. You're going, you're, we know the workers and the writers yeah. are on strike right now. This is where it's important to start at the local level, support your, support your local filmmakers. Um, and it's just great to get out and see new stuff by people you may know. Yeah. And some of these are going to end up winning awards, oh, yeah. not only here, but, but elsewhere throughout Always. the country. Yes. Uh, we, you know, we recently talked about um, Cine Festival, which mm -hmm. is based on Latino filmmakers. Um, you know, SA Film Festival is a great indie film festival that has been around forever that does also see local filmmakers rise up to bigger screens. So it's really important. Get out, enjoy, support it. No matter where you live in town. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we've got reggae, <laughs> no you've got excuses. food, you've got the finale. <laughs> like I said, if, the, if you think there's nothing going on in San Antonio, you're not watching That's right. Stephanie on Fridays. Keep it booed. Or following you on and social media. And pay attention. Media. That's when right. are we going to sleep? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, we're going to be too busy. We don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's your new logo. Yeah. Stephanie never sleeps. Thank you. Great to see you. Yes, have a great weekend, everyone. You too. All right, we'll be right back.